Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to go through the proof behind this statement that you see here, which you can say as uh, the del operator crossed with the uh, gradient of a scalar is equal to zero, or the curl of the gradient of a scalar is equal to zero. Either way you want to say it is fine. So let's start by first defining what del is and what del phi is. So del is just an operator, it acts on something, it could be a scalar, a vector, etc. So we have d, d, d of something dx in the i direction, plus d, d something dy in the j direction, plus d of something dz in the k direction. And phi we're defining as a scalar, uh, so it can be a function of position x, y, or z. Think about temperature. Temperature is a scalar, but it can be different from here to here to here. Now if we apply the del operator to phi, so we're taking the gradient of this scalar phi, we have plugging in phi into these positions here. We have d phi dx in the i direction, plus d phi dy in the j direction, plus d phi dz in the k direction. And now all we want to do is just take the cross product of the del operator here, crossed with the gradient of the scalar function here. And that's what this is. We'll write it in our normal way for a cross product, where we have the determinant of this 3x3 three three matrix, where we have the directions i, j, k, and then we have the del operator here, and then the gradient of phi here. And we'll just start off by taking this Starting off with the i direction here, we'll cross out this uh, row, this column, and then we'll multiply this times this, minus this times this, and that gives us this term here. For j, we're going to have a negative in front of the j, and then we're eliminating this here and the i and the k here, and we're going to take this times this minus this times this, that gives us this term, and then we have plus the k direction, the k hat direction here, and so we're getting rid of this and this, and what we end up with is this times this minus this times this. And the reason that the negative uh, is in front of the j is that actually what comes in front of these is negative 1 to the i plus j position. So if we're talking about the i position here, this is in the, this i is in the 1, 1. So it's in the first row, first column. So we have negative 1 to the 1 plus 1, which is negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. For j, we're in the first row, second column, so we end up having negative 1 to the 1 plus 2, which is negative 1 to the 3, and that gives us a negative this k is now going to be positive because you have 1, 3, gives you 4, and that'll give you a positive here. And so, if we use Clairaut's theorem here, you can see these are mixed partial derivatives, but using Clairaut's theorem, for almost all cases, you'll have that, these, that d phi dy dz is equal to d phi dz dy. So if you change the order of partial differentiation, it's not going to change the final value. So that ends up being true for this and this and this and this as well. So that this minus this, if they're the same thing, it ends up being zero. So what you have is you have zero here, you have zero here, you have zero here, and so the cross product of the del crossed with the gradient of a scalar ends up equaling zero. And this is useful for, in particular, uh, for the derivation of potential flows, which I'll do in a couple other videos. Thanks for watching.